All right, we've got three packages today. Two of them was only one thing in each. Okay, I think I need this to the opening. Basically, like, if you're gonna rip this, you want to get far enough down that you get to the opening. It's like one of those here, so it's holding on to something in here real tightly. That's you see. Okay, this you know, I actually don't even try anything other than this. Let's go ahead and do that. And then for this one, we don't want to cut because this is a piece of packaging with a styrofoam inside of it. But this should contain the vast majority of this week's update. Just making sure there's nothing else in there. Uh, why don't we go ahead and begin with these in the order that they came out? Now that should be a little better. Okay, so we got. Felt weird back there. We got. Oh, maidens in your savage season. Unless that's Oh, maidens in your savage season, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be season. Uh, I don't know what this one is even about. Kind of curious. Uh. I see there, it looks like it's got an English dub. It's region A only, 12 episodes on two discs. You can't learn everything about love from a book. I was trying to think if there was something stylized about that character design that rang a bell, but I'm not sure. Looks curious. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about it. Next up we have Fate Caliad Liner Prisma Ilia Prisma Phantasm. Well, which I don't know which um Basically, since there's no fucking numbers involved, I'm just completely lost. I remember kind of something very spoilerific from the end of the last one I watched. And presumably this is next, although there's only one disc in here, so I probably should figure that out. Yeah, includes OVA on one disc. Hmm. Japanese with English subtitles for something... And now for something completely random. So this one isn't completely story then. Huh. And I guess... Hmm. Interesting. We just have our guest. Although... Huh. I don't think that's our usual hairstyle. Interesting. Next up we have... Ride Your Wave. I think this one... I'm trying to remember. This one's been out for a while, but I think it just never came out on DVD or Blu-ray here in the States. I think I imported one of these. Well, this is G Kids, I think. Uh, that's not G Kids. Where, where's G Kids? This is G Kids. Um, I think. I'm trying to be thorough, although now I think about it. Oh, look! Oh, but I've got a DVD version here and a Blu ray plus DVD version there. So, there's that thing with it. But I guess I will go ahead and put this aside. This will be like something I could give to a friend or something. Because this has both Blu-ray and DVD, which I think it, uh, I think the markings for these do tend to confuse me. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything worth pointing out back here. I see an A 
there, so it's probably region A only. Oh well. Anyways, let's open it up. Check it out. Hmm. We've got. Hmm. Ride your wave. This is actually not just to have advertisement. Oh, there's some neat little pictures in there. Hmm. And here you can see this would probably be the you know, DVD version, and here's your Blu ray version. Upside down. That, that's a little bit better. It was really weird trying to process it. Looks like... Anyways, I guess there's something surfing related going on there. But, <clears throat> there we have Ride Your Wave. Blu-ray and DVD, or just the DVD version if you want that. Next up. Fairy Tale, Final Season, Blu-ray DVD. says 23 right there. Hopefully I've been keeping up on that stuff. I don't fucking remember like exclusive art cards. It's... <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. I'm just looking at the wall back there and seeing fairy tale Bombs one, two, three, and four, and just thinking, you've come so far. Region A, English dub. So far in this that I don't know what I am. Hold on, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, let's see, that one we can set aside. We've got this a PS4 game. Actually, it's also available on Switch. Oh, and then we have... I think these are the only two postcards that I feel here. This one I've seen a couple of times, but then again, you know... That one takes a second glance, because like, oh, is she not wearing completely appropriate attire? Which, now I think about it, is at least his thing early on. Hmm. Well, anyways, I'll put these all back so I can take a look quickly at these discs. The blue's probably being Blu-ray. Yeah, I see it says Blu-ray right there. The red's being DVD. Hmm. Well, I, th I think we know which picture they really liked for this one, huh? She only appears in, like, three of the things. Granted, I, I would guess that most of the fairy tale viewing audience probably is that but it's I don't know weird Astra lost in space with a sticker hiding some sexy jacket kind of reminds me of the Boku no Hero um, tire huh well, that's kind of a fascinating little image I have no idea what this is. This is a complete series. Whatever it is. Something about space. Lost in Space does kind of scare me as a concept. But, you know, I did watch some Lost in Space. Or most of it. So, English dub. Lost in Space, but lost together. But, uh, based on the manga from Shonen Jump. We've got two Blu-ray discs. Cute guy, cute gal, and then it's just a question of whether or not they'll have cute kids together. And then probably the whole cast. Interesting. Did I say this one had a dub? I did say this one had a dub. So I guess um, you know, that makes it easy to check out. Whether or not I get around to that is a valid question. If you're saying, we just can't trust you to do that anymore, Giga, then yeah. Uh, this is Gun Build Fighters Special. 
special build. I, I can't read that. Uh, and of course I'm trying to hurry up here because you did hear the notification and that's on the work computer. I tried to record this during the day in between meetings. Oh my god, this is some really annoying plastic. It's doing whatever it wants. Oh well. Single disc. And let's see, according to the back. Looks like Japanese audio only. What's that runtime? Except that it's not runtime. 114 minutes. Which means there's a little content there. And then last but not least, we have Galaxy Angel AA Plus S. So. Double A is one thing, S is another thing. I have, I don't remember the Galaxy Angel on Blu-ray stuff for sure where it is. You know, basically, I'm kind of mindlessly going by, oh yeah, I think I already got this one, or the previous one. But if I remember correctly, this finishes it. Jeez, how many millennia ago did these start coming out on Blu-ray? It feels like a long time ago. Now granted, um, virus makes everything feel like a long time ago. Including yesterday. I'm trying to remember if there was anything notable about yesterday. <clears throat> hmm. Reporting for duty. <laughs> they said duty. See region A uh, subtitles English, but there's also English audio. Hmm. And then inside there we've got a loose disc thing. Huh. Okay, let's um let's see. So we have Mint with the characters standing on her, Forte with the characters standing on her, then I guess we just have all five characters. I'm trying to think if those could be favorite characters. I know they at least represent extremes with um, Forte being the most mature looking and Mint being the most... Uh, I forget that word, the word that I wanted to use, but she's the youngest looking, I guess. She's also the bitchiest, but... Uh. Anyways, um, here's this week's Anime DVD Collection update. So, I'm not sure if I really have much to update in terms of stuff I watched and stuff I did. I think I spent a lot of time this past week resting and sleeping. I mean, I did watch um, some episodes of ReZero with my friend. You know, we're, get, we're getting close to... We're, we're in the um, fourth quarter of the show. Which you can kind of tell is interesting enough because he at first thought he was only going to watch one episode. Because basically... Um, Especially, like, so normally with my Friday friend, um, we cycle through restaurants, and um, <clears throat> with a you know the the virus, pandemic stuff, whatever, um, you know, basically um, some of the places we used to frequent uh, closed down. I'm not entirely sure why, because I got the impression some of them are doing fine. Others I could understand because. You know, like, Galaxy Cafe, I think most of their staff tended to be much younger people. So probably, you know, they didn't want to as much. It's a little more sit-down-y than uh, other places. Basically, a lot of the places that um, have survived COVID either had a huge um, 
financial uh, stockpile, I guess, to keep them afloat, maybe. Or um, <clears throat> adapted very quickly to takeout, either because they already had takeout or they were able to go mostly that and depend a lot on that, right? So one of the places we frequent is a local restaurant called Troy, um, also known as Troy ATX, I guess. Again, it's it's only a single restaurant. A couple from Turkey moved here. It's very nice. Um, if you wonder what Turkish food is like, it's a pretty Mediterranean dish. <clears throat> Basically, if you've eaten food from that general area, that geographical area, there's some similarities there. So, gyro, gyro, you know, that thing that's spelled gyro, but sort of pronounced gyro, but the G is actually, I think, normally <laughs> hero or something like that. You know, they've got that there, and that, that's one of the things I eat. And hummus, of course, is another really common thing. Baklava is great, too. But, you know, it's just, it's a nice restaurant. It's really nice to go there and see them again. And sometimes, especially with um, times being as they are, <clears throat> you know, we've been patronizing them for a long time, and we've continued to patronize them even... Um, as the pandemic hit and you know they're kind of the ones that we worried the most about because they're smaller but they've been doing pretty good my guess is um, even though a lot more people are at home and cooking food now just <clears throat> for their own sanity or whatnot they're not probably cooking a lot of Mediterranean dishes or Indian dishes or something I mean you got people from those cultures here but Austin has a mix of a lot of places, especially a lot of people from California. Not that I'm saying that they're all that, but <clears throat> you know, m most people are not going to have these kind of dishes in their repertoire. So, um, you know, it's kind of I think that's helped them stay afloat. And you know, at the same time, we've continued to patronize them, and I've kind of learned that you know, in this environment, Grubhub um, and you know. Basically, those kind of services are getting more powerful because more people who order out use them, which means they have more bargaining power, and apparently they're taking more of the cut. So, all I know is it sounds like it's really valuable to them that we continue to, you know, be one of the few patrons that continue to eat in person. You know, we, we were doing pick up and to go before, which probably also helps. <clears throat> but, you know, we're just there. It basically means that we socialize with them a lot. And so sometimes our meals there can get a little late, which means not as much time to watch anime. But that's okay, because the thing my friend is really hoping for is more One Piece. Although I suspect he's kind of seeing some of the entertainment of um, the end of ReZero here, where one episode... <clears throat> kind of leaves him wanting more. They, you could say that they kind of transition correct, and I was mentioning about the four-act structure and some of the trickiness with ReZero, where, you know, in a four-act structure, the third act is supposed to be um, the lowest um, that your heroes or protagonists or whatever could be at. And ReZero definitely embodies a whole lot of that. And I guess some of the problem is... I've discussed other problems, but it could also be one of those things where it just is so... Basically, I think people watching the show could also lose faith, because it sounds like my brother kind of stopped watching at that part, and he didn't continue watching to the part that my friend is seeing now, which is where, um, you know, the fourth act begins, and... <clears throat> Our, our protagonists have learned or improved or grown and, you know, things can finally start resolving. Great. I want a direct message. So, yeah. Anyways, um... <clears throat> so I think it's effective to say that my friend stayed around for a couple more episodes to wrap up one part of this final story arc. This is also, I, I should probably re-watch the series, but this part definitely does some more stuff with um, <clears throat> the ending credits rolling 
while stuff is finishing up. Like a lot of very important things happen such that time in the end credits is still time in the episode. Or time left to digest stuff or stuff like that. Or maybe there's no ending credits, I don't remember. But yeah, that's pretty much the main thing I've watched. I mean, everything else was just... Random YouTube videos, sleep. I didn't even really play much in the way of video games. I played Terraria with my brother last Tuesday. And we're going to actually do something with Tabletop Simulator today. So I guess we'll see if um, controls with the Index are any better than the Vive. Not that I expect them to be better. Because I think the problems were essentially that... Um, I think Tabletop Simulator was probably an early adopter of VR. So... <clears throat> it has some ideas for integration, but maybe not like a lot of refined, oh, let's do, redo this all from scratch sort of stuff. So, yeah, I guess we'll find out. I'm probably going to go to bed with a sore neck. <sighs> guess we'll find out. <clears throat> yeah, but it'll all be right there, so it should be interesting. Um... And yeah, this will be my first time with the index controllers. I've got my replacement controllers. And there's already a problem with the right controller, but it's not one that is too problematic, where the system button thinks I'm touching it, but that doesn't cause the thumb to be detected as down, I guess. And so it's not the same as pressing it, so... Uh, whatever. <clears throat> I need to find a, another USB... or another Lighthouse 2.0 compatible controller to use as my backups because I don't trust these to last at all. <clears throat> hmm. But yeah, the only other thing is I guess in VR chat I've been trying to reverse engineer how, the mechanism that makes it possible to do um, touch-based particle menu systems. I mean, there's other things you can do with that, but um, I've been kind of curious, mostly because in order for them to actually work, there has to be a way to translate particles interacting with a trigger that causes an animation to run. And I think I've figured it out. Because the idea is particle systems have a stop action, which causes them to turn themselves off. And when that happens, um, <clears throat> yeah, when that happens, um, you, if you have something else that has them turned on, then when they try to turn themselves off, instead of turning off, they kind of restart themselves, which tr kicks off any animation, animations or animator controllers or sounds that happen to be attached. So I have some things to play with there. Things to play with there. But, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, um, I, I guess, yeah, the, the idea is, yeah, you have another animator higher up. Keep it turned on so that when it tries to turn itself off, instead of turning off the... Because the animator controls it, it says, oh, I guess I'm just restarting instead. And it's close to getting, I'm close to getting something working as a actual viable proof of concept, but I guess I have to continue working on it because it's not quite there yet. Oh well, but yeah, um, you know, continue doing that. Other than that, <clears throat> yeah. Pretty much n n nothing, just zombing. So I guess I'll go ahead and end this video here. Y'all have a nice week.